right, so again, we're going to just try something new here as a class. So what I'd like all of you to do, and I'm taking for granted that you all have your, you all have your Macs up, right? And if you don't, I'll give you 30 seconds. I don't know what you're doing. Doesn't have his Mac up. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thanks. I, I, I've been able to get through this class so far about the Mac. Thanks. I'm trying. <laughs> oh, I'm trying. <laughs> All right, so get the Macs on. Let's start up a brand new project. What we're going to do first, and I'll show you this on the board. Granted, if you're listening to this, on a tape, this isn't going to mean much to you, but um, I mean, I, I can show it to you, but I'd have to get off, get, get into edit, and I hate the editor for Mac. But we're going to have a very simple interface. In the upper left-hand corner, we're going to have an arrow, which means start, okay? In the upper right-hand corner, we're going to have an X, which means stop. In the lower left-hand corner, we're going to have kind of a pipe sign, which means pause, okay? That's what we're going to create in just a minute. I don't want you to create any of these on your own because we're going to do it a different way that we haven't done yet. Then in the middle, someplace around the middle, we're going to have this really nice big label. All right? I don't care what color you make this. You don't have to turn it in. All right? But we're going to make a simple stopwatch. All right? But it's going to be very, very, very crude. It's not going to have hours, minutes, and seconds on it, but I'm going to show you how to fix that when we get done. So we'll initialize that so when it starts out, there's a zero there, okay? So the idea is, starts out as a zero. You click at the start, boom, in a second it goes to one, next second it goes to two, next second it goes to three, etc. You hit that button, after three, it stops then. You click start again, and then it comes up with four, then to five, etc. That should make sense to everybody. You click the X up here. And literally, whatever the number was, it stops and it resets itself to zero. All that makes sense? Okay. But the way we're going to do this is up here, that that you see up in the upper left-hand corner on the top of the screen, that's going to be a navigation bar. And then down at the bottom where this is, that's going to be a toolbar. So we're going to put a nav bar in here, and we're going to put a toolbar in here. We haven't done that yet. There's really not a whole heck of a lot of code in here. All right? And so just to show you, in fact, before I even start up Xcode here, let me do this. Somewhere in here I've got my, I think this is the one. So I'm going to run mine for you from the get-go. So like, you, like I said, not real much in here, okay? And when I go to run this, I found out that uh, usually if it's the first time of the day, you know, I have a tendency to not be very patient, so I stop it and start it again, stop it maybe two or three times, it will start. Sometimes it takes close to three or four minutes. It did this morning. And then it finally came up and everything was hunky dory. All right. <coughs> so it'll come up there in just a minute. We really, I'm looking in here, there's pro probably only about 10 to 15 lines of code we're going to run to write to do the whole thing. All right. Then when we get done with this, I'm going to show you one I found online, and in a way you might say it's better, and in a way you might say it's worse, and I'll, I'll explain that to you in just a second. I, I, used, I used none of that for this. After I got done writing this, I went back and said, okay, let's see if there's one out there, and it just happened to be the first one that I saw out there, and it was okay. It wasn't great, but it was okay. So here it is. So notice when I click here, there it starts. When I click here, it pauses. I can start it again. When I click here, it goes to X. I can rotate it. 
and it still looks fine. Does all that make sense? So that's what we're going to write now. Let me stop the simulator, and let me stop this project. You already have this, and when I say you already have this, there is a folder out there with today's date on it, out on the P drive, that's got this in it and the other one. All right? So why am I even going through this? Because in your app, you may decide that you want to put a navigation bar in it to allow you to peruse and do different things, or you may decide you want to put a toolbar in it, or both. All right? So that's the, the uh, reasoning behind it. So again, I'm starting up into Xcode. I'm going to start with a new project. So file new project. As we always do, we'll keep it single view. And all right, I'm hoping that I don't remember my other one if I called it stopwatch with a space or without a space. So just call it stopwatch. In fact, I'll call mine stopwatch two. Because I don't, I, you don't have to put a two there. I don't know if I have a stopwatch and a stopwatch one there. I've written this a couple times. All right. It doesn't really matter here. I just kept it to universal. But of course, as always, make sure that the language is Swift. And create it wherever you want to. Mine will be on the desktop. All right. Now, I think I mentioned this to you previously, but on the off chance, I did not. All right. Here's my view controller. In fact, I'm going to shut most everything else down. All right, so there's my view controller right there. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that view controller the way that it is. I don't know if you're like me with what I'm about to tell you or not, but I find that to be too bulky, for lack of better words, to work with. So what I like to do is I like to click up here where it says view controller, click on there, and go over to my connections inspector. And then if you do that, so what did I do? I clicked literally on here, then under my object library, I went over to the connections inspector. And when you do that, you'll notice it should look like this on your size and a bunch of other stuff in there. And if I go over to here where it says size and it's got inferred, if I change it to iPhone 4 inch, I find that easier to work with. Maybe you agree with what I just said and maybe you don't agree with what I just said. Yeah, change to the arrow down, which is the inspector. One right in the middle. What's that? Oh, it's in the wrong one. Because I had that too. You got to switch your. You got to go to the middle one. Yeah. Switch to the. Get one of the wrong one at first. Oh, I went to the wrong one. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's it's this one. All right, I'm sorry. You got it on the right one. So one is blue. There you go. My fault. Yeah. Gee, I've never made a mistake before. Yeah. Now everybody, please stop yeah, laughing. I yeah. No, you, you can set it to anything you want. And all that does is it changes the size of it on your screen. It doesn't change anything. When you run it, it's still going to be run based off of right here. That's what you set your simulator to. All right. But if you want to do this, I find it easier to drag stuff. I mean, to me, especially when I bring up my assistant editor, now... Even if I have over here, if I've got my document outline, and I've got this, and I've got these, I've got room. All right? Now, you may agree with that. You may not agree with it. If you don't, you can set it back to you know, the way it was. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do in here is I'm going to go down and make sure that my object library is open. That is the one for the object library. I know that one. It's the rightmost one there. All right. And in my object library, I'm going to come down into my, my uh, search bar here, and I'm going to type navigation. You may or may not be aware of this. Again, I'm just throwing a few things at you as they're coming to my mind. And that is when you start typing in here, most of the stuff that's in here is... is uh, Four characters specific. So if I just type in Navi, for example, it's going to find this. So if you'd rather do that. All right. 
So there's a navigation controller, a navigation bar, and there's a navigation item. What we're going to do in here, the one we're going to be working with, all right, the one we're going to be working with is the navigation bar. Let me just say one thing about it. By default, which means unless told otherwise, when we, when we go and drag it in here, it's one, of those it's one of those controls that's designed to take up the entire screen. That makes sense to everybody? All right. The problem is, if it takes up the entire screen, by default, it's going to cover that status bar at the top, which we really don't want because, remember, up there we're going to have those two buttons. All right. So even if it does bring it up there, you'll want to drag it down so basically it's about up to right there. Does that make sense to people? All right. So again, I'm just going to grab this navigation bar right here. Drag it over, put it about in the, you know, wherever. I'll put it up near the top. But notice if I do this, now it's covering up everything. See that? If I pull it, move it down a little bit, how it's not? You see what I just did? And if you didn't, I'm going to do it again. So if you, if you go up to the navigation bar and you see where the title is, all right, now I've got it covered. Now it's not covered. All right, so that's about right, right there. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It does? Oh, okay. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is double click on the title because I don't I don't like a title of title. So I'm going to change it just to nav bar. All right. And nav bar is actually a term we're all used to. You hear nav bar even in HTML. Travis says, please don't discuss HTML right now. All right. But it's something that we're all familiar with. Okay? Now, what we don't want here, you might think it is, we don't want any of the rest, but what we want to do is we want to grab and put an icon here, and we want to put an icon there. All right, that's what we want to do next. And actually, we're going to do about four or five things, and the order in which we do them really and truly doesn't matter. All right, but we're going to do them in the order, this order. All right, so I typed in bar, and it's a bar button item. But again, you only have to type in bar space or bar B. Okay. And these things are, for lack of better words, and you'll know this as soon as you put them in, for lack of better words, these are a little bit inky. What I mean by this is I want you to put one of them about right there and one of them about right here. Okay. So drag them up. But before you do that, if you don't watch what you're doing, it sticks it way over in the corner, and they make it impossible for you to move it. I'm serious. I literally, I got so freaking frustrated that I removed the nav bar and just started over again. All right? It, it became that big of a pain in the butt to do that. All right? So I'm going to go to this bar button item. And I'm going to go and see where it came down. That's not bad. And where it says item right there, that's not where it's going to go. It's going to go where the box is. See that? So I'm going to put in another one, too. All right. So we could change this in a lot of different ways. But what you'll notice for each one of these, okay, when you take your mouse and single click on item there or single click on item there, you're going to want to change where it says identifier. All right, so I'm just going to do the first one first. So I'm going to click over here on item and go over here to identifier. And the one I want to choose, it's about three quarters of the way down here, it's play. Everybody see it's up on the screen too. All right, good. That's a good start. All right, then I'm going to go over to the other one. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to choose stop. All right. So now, so far, my nav bar is really looking the way that I want it to look. Okay. Now, in just in just a minute, in just a minute, we're going to put a toolbar down here. But I want to say a couple things about it first. First of all, with a toolbar, there's no status bar at the bottom of your screen, so you can butt that toolbar up right to the bottom. Everybody cool with that? All right, and what I want to mention to you, because toolbars are a little bit different animal. So we're going to create the toolbar, and we're going to drag over another one of these 
Bar button items. Notice that use, you use it for a toolbar or a navigation bar. All right. So we're going to drag over another one over here, and then we're going to put that'll be the pause. But this is what I want to tell you before you do that. For right now, we're only going to put one button over there. But let's pretend. We're just pretending here. We wanted to put two buttons in. Okay. Let's say we wanted to put another button here that's that literally had a letter A in it because that was an about button or something. Everybody understand that? All right. If I try to do that, even if I put it right here automatically it's going to be put right there, right next to the other one. That's just the way these things work. So if you want one, if you want one on both ends, then in between them you have to put in one of these flexible spacebar button items. All right? If you literally, so if down here, if we put that in, it's going to put a bunch of X's and then you can drag something into the corner. Everybody understand that? All right? So, before we do that, I want to show you something. I'm going to save what I've got so far. Oop, I don't want to duplicate it. No, no. And after I save it, I'm just going to run it. I just wanted to show you something, and then we'll, we'll continue on. Like I said, we're still going to be done sometime around 4 o'clock. So right now, I think you'd all agree, it pretty much looks the way that I told you that it should look. Problem is, what happens when I do this? I don't know about you, but to me, that doesn't look very good. All right? So let's talk about how we make this as easy as possible, because to some people, when you hear auto layout, you just want to cover your ears or whatever. So let's talk about how we can try to, quote, fix this as simple as possible, all right? I think everybody would agree what we want to end up doing, regardless of whether it's portrait or landscape, is we want to pin it to the top, we want to pin it to the left, we want to pin it to the right, we don't give a darn about the bottom. Does that make sense to everybody? That's probably, the, if you remember that, we'll be fine, because there's very little you have to do in order to do that. So I'm going to stop the run here, quit the simulator, and I'm going to go back to my program, and I'm going to click, and. One thing I find myself doing continuously, I don't know about you, but the more I'm doing this, the more I'm bringing up that document outline. And if for some reason you've got a control behind another control or you just are having problems with something, if I have my, if I have my assistant editor up here, you may or may not be aware of this, so that's what I'm telling you. If I have my assistant editor right here, everybody looking, and I decide that I want to go and control drag from here to here or whatever, and for some reason it's just not working. I don't know why, but if it's just not working, I can go and I can control drag from here to there also. All right? How did I find that out? By mistake. All right? And it seems to work just fine. One thing that I'm finding out, the, what the author in, of, of the PDF that we're using, all right, that sometimes when I'm running into problems with the author's code, what the author tells you to do is, oh, just go ahead and drag out any control you want, and then go and you know come up here and and, and um, go into that dot and control drag on the dot over. That's giving me nothing but he but heartaches and headaches. But when I do it the way that we've been doing it, all right, you know when you go and you put it out there and then you control drag from you know into the assistant editor, I haven't had a problem. All right. So I want to make sure that my navigation bar is chosen. Now it is. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go over to my pin menu, and I'm going to click on the pin. And yours actually probably, if you did it close to mine, this is pretty much how it'll look. Your numbers might not be identical, all right? They might not be identical. Right now, I don't want that zero because that just looks too funky to me. It looks like it's going to be up to the top. So I'm going to manually change that. I'm just going to put an eight there. It might be okay to leave it at zero. I don't know. But the point is... The key thing here is I want to make sure that that's checked, that's checked, and that's checked. And again, I'm just going to set that one to eight. All right. So what that's going to do when we get all done is that's saying, okay, I want this pinned here, 
I want this pinned here, and I want that pinned up here. Will that make sense? All right. So I'm going to go down here and add my three constraints. You'll notice as off times happens, I get the stuff in yellow or in red or in whatever. All right. So I'm going to go to the thing next to my pin menu, which is my resolve layout issues, and I'm going to tell it to update my constraints. And that fixed it. Did I go too fast? Did that make sense to everybody? When I opened up the constraints... When you, you came here to pin first, yeah. and when it came up, I set it to zero, mine was already to minus 16, and minus 16 on both sides. Right. And I made sure the three red things, the three red bars were all highlighted, and the top one was set to, to eight, because mine was set to zero originally. And you made the six, minus 16? Yeah, you, that's fine. Okay. And then just add the three. And then add the three constraints. What about the one at the bottom? No, the, the thing at the bottom we're not doing because that that's that's where this is in relationship to the bottom of the screen. We don't care because we're going to put other stuff there. We don't care what that means. All right. The only thing that we care about for constraints are these three. So imagine with this rectangle, we don't care about that bottom line right now. All right. The All right. Constraints. Now. So if it's if it's red, then after you do that. Then next to the pin, you click the yeah. resolve, resolve Layout Issues button, and you go up near the top, and there should be something there that says Resolve Constraints. Yeah. All right? And if you click update. on that, all right, Update Constraints. OK. So if I go and save again, and I go and run it again, Like I said, this, there's not that much to do in here. There really isn't. There's only, like I said, about 10 lines of code. So once we get there, we'll be fine. So you can see what it looks like now, but notice when I go and rotate it now, now it looks the way I want it to look. I just, I just always click hardware, and I go to rotate left. Right. Sometimes, it, work right away. Sometimes it, it, it's a little funky. Sometimes anything with a Mac is just a little funky. And I got to watch it because with Mac, when I say funky, I have a this, I have a tendency to leave the wrong, put the wrong letter in the word funky. Okay. That's like what I said. Sometimes when you rotate, it won't rotate back right. How do you get that view controller seen up? I don't. I just went under hardware in the menu. What? This? That's the button that's down here. You, all right. All right, so I'm going to stop the simulator. That's fine now. That's looking pretty much the way I want it to look. All right? So hopefully everybody's at least close right there. All right? So the next thing I want to do is I want to come down and find a toolbar. The main difference between a toolbar and a navigation bar, navigation bars typically go at the top of the screen because they have a title. Toolbars don't have a title. So you typically wouldn't want to put a nav bar down there because it has a title. All right? Well, what if I put a nav bar down there and just didn't give it a title? I don't know. You know, those are the kind of questions that make my head hurt. All right? So I'm going to use a toolbar right here. So I want to make sure that I can see the bottom of the screen so I can, so I can stuff my toolbar right in there. All right? Say stuff your toolbar. Put the toolbar. Place the toolbar. So there's toolbar. And again, I'm going to put it down here. I can put it down as far as I want. I can push it all the way over to the side if I want to, whatever. I can leave it a little gap. It really and truly does, isn't going to matter that much. Okay? And they've got item right there. You have already know how to do this. So I'm going to go over by item, and I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to go back up to identifier, and I'm going to change that to cancel. I'm sorry, pause, pause, which is right under play. So there's that. Now, 
Do I have to say anything to anybody as far as I'm going to click on here again, I'm going to go over to my pin menu, and this time I don't care what the top says, but I want the bottom, wherever it is, Okay, in fact, you know what? What was the other one? It was minus 16, right? So I'm going to try to manually put in minus 16 on all these. And I'm going to leave this one here. I want it right on the bottom, so I'm going to put that to zero. And I'm going to put on those three constraints. So I put here, I think that's an eight. That's got to be a zero. What's that? That's going to be a zero. Absolutely on the bottom? Yeah. Oh, my already is. All right. Yeah, yours might be. So I want... Again, the top one doesn't matter here because that's just how far it is away from its neighbor. We don't care. We're going to put other things in there. And if you've done all this and it says three constraints, you should be okay. Again, if it does get red here, if it is red here when you do that, then go over to your resolve and you can say update constraints. All right. Now, mine might be off a little bit here. I don't really care. I just wanted you to get the idea with that. That's all. All right. So if I go and run it again now, All right, it looks pretty much, I think, the way it should look. And when I rotate it, it's still looking pretty much the way I want it to look. All right, so I now have my interface built. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put my code in. Everybody cool with that? Again, to me... To me, the biggest advantage of making this about that size is I've got my document outline over here. And again, if you don't know, that's the button that turns the document outline on and off right there. All right? But I want to keep it on. But now I don't need this. I don't need my object library. But I am going to bring up my assistant editor. So now I've got half the screen that's going to take up my GUI and my document outline. And the other half of the screen is going to take up, be taken up by the assistant editor. All right, I think that's a pretty nice setup. So with this in here, I'm going to first close the object library. All right, now that's closed. I can manually move this over again. I can click on here. Ah, there's a way to move it. But I, I, and I'm going to open up my assistant editor. All right. Move that over. There we go. All right. To me now, it looks, it looks pretty good. That's the way I want it to look. All right. Now, there's one more thing that we do have to do here before we can really start putting in code, but I, we can leave that up. That's fine. All right. I'm going to bring up the um, object library again in just a second because I want a label that's going to go right here. All right. Now, a couple things. Before you go and drag that label over, we're, we're going we're gonna to literally tell that label to be put right in the middle. Okay. But you know by default, labels are not real big. So we're going to stretch it both horizontally and vertically a little bit. And then we're going to change the, the size on it to about something pretty big, like about 60 or 65 or whatever. Make it pretty big. And if you want, you can even make it bold. All right, and we're going to center it. So I'm going to come back up because I forgot to do that. I'm going to bring up the object library one more time. I'm going to go down to the bottom here where it says toolbar still, and I'm going to type in label. All right, and for right now, maybe I will close that. And I'm going to drag that label over. So it's somewhere pretty close to in the middle. I'll get the little plus there. All right. But after I do that, what do I want to do? Well, I want to whip it over here. And I'll use the blue things as my guides. And then I'll move it up a ways here. And I'll move it up or down a ways here. And again, it's probably not perfect but it's okay for what we're doing. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. And right now, let's face it, a couple things. First of all, the word label in there is stupid. When it starts up, we want it to have the number zero in there, so I'll put a zero in there, and I'll center it, and then I'm going to start making it bigger.
72. It just stopped there. That's fine. Maybe I moved off of it. But that looks about right. Okay? Now, what I can do, because, again, this is going to look funky when I run this and I go over to landscape mode, the way that it currently is. So I can pin this also, but I'm going to pin it in a little bit different way. All right? So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to come over here make sure that the label is highlighted. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to a line. All right? So the first thing I did was I went over to a line. And I'm going to tell it to horizontally center and vertically center in the container to pretty much line it up with where it is. All right? Again, I may not have done it perfectly myself, but this is going to help. So I'm going to go over here to horizontal center and vertical center, and I'm going to add those two constraints. And you'll notice it, it's pretty darn close to where I wanted it to be. All right? Now I can go over and I can pin... And I can look at what's here. All right, and what do I have to pin? The only thing I really care about are these two. I want both those to be set to zero. I don't care about these two numbers right here. I really and truly don't. I suppose if I wanted to make sure it was centered perfectly, I could add up 167 and 194, and I'd get, what, 361. So I could try to make it about 180, so I don't really care that much. All right? If this was going to be something I was going to try to make and sell, maybe I'd want to do something like that. All right, but for what we're doing now, I think it's fine the way it is. So I've added those two constraints by those red bars, and I'm going to click Add Two Constraints. All right? And I'm going to come back over to the next one, and I'm going to again say Update Constraints. Still looks like it's red, which I don't like. All right, did it, I did an Update Frames. I did an Update Constraints, then an Update Frames, and it appears to be fine. All right, I'm going to save this again. And I'm running it again. And ideally now, because this is the last time I'm going to do this, until we get it all done and we have this code, all right? So ideally, it looks, that looks about the way I think it should look right there. And if I go and rotate it, that looks pretty good, all right? Again, it's not functional yet because if I click any of those button things there, they're not going to do anything. Does that make sense to people? All right? We're going to put those in right now. So I'm again going to stop the simulator. Now I can close my object library and I can bring up my assistant editor. All right? Now, think about in here, think about it, seriously. This one right here, which is my start button, this one right here, which is my stop button, this one right here, which is my pause button, those are all going to have to be all IB outlets with actions, or IB actions. Does that make sense? Because we're going to need code for all of them. The label will be just a plain IB outlet. Again, the recommendation that's been made so far by Swift in conformance with other languages is you do the one that's just going to be an outlet first, and then you do your actions afterwards. The order in which, so I'm going to do that one first, but whether you do you know, start, then stop, then pause, or any order of those, it doesn't matter. It really and truly doesn't matter. So. First thing I'm going to do, just because it's just me and I hate these, I hate those curlies right there, so I always move them, all right? But that's just me. All right, so I'm going to click on my label, and I'm going to Control-Drag up to here, all right? And, I don't know, time label, all right? And I'm looking here. I don't like the way it says NS layout constraints. So I think that whatever I did, I didn't. I don't like what I did. So I want to try to do another control drag. That looks better. UI label. All right, and I'm going to connect. Now I'm asking this question because, in all seriousness, this isn't funny or anything. I'm ignorant of your answer. 
Do you all get now why that needs an exclamation point at the end of it? All right? It needs an exclamation point at the end of it because basically what you're saying is, remember the way that this is set up right now with the exclamation point there, what we're saying is, hey, by the time, by the time this program runs, that will have a value in it. But what's its value now? There isn't any, right? So by putting that exclamation point, and we didn't do it, the system did. That's the equivalent of the system saying, ID outlet week bar time label, UI label equals nil. It does that for us. All right, and it's, you know, I, I can't give you any other explanation. Well, why'd they do that? I, I didn't write the language. But I believe that was their rationale behind doing it. All right, so I'm gonna call these this was what? This was uh, play, and that one was stop, and that one was pause, right? We can call them start and stop. It doesn't really matter, all right? But I'm just going to call them what they were here. So I'm going to start dragging down. So I'm going to click on this first icon. And if, again, if you're not sure, go over your document outline and click where it says play. Everybody see what I just did? All right. Now I can either control drag from here over here, or I can control drag from here over there. Either one will work. Just to show you, I'll control drag right from where I am. Whoops. And I'll put it down there. There it goes. All right, and that'll be an action. And again, let's just call them what they are. So I'll call this, it's not really a button. So I'm just going to call it play. And, and you know, it's funny, the, the author of the book that we have, the author, at least through the first 10 chapters, never changes that. Leaves, it, leaves that always to any object. I don't like that. So I'm going to click the down arrow, and I'm going to choose UI bar button item in mine. And connect. So there's my first one right there. There's play. Then I'm going to go over to the one next to it right here. And I'm going to make sure that that one's highlighted. So there's stop. So again, I'm going to control drag. And just to show you it, I'll do it from here now. So I'll control drag from here down. And again, it's going to be an action. And since the other one was play, we'll make this one stop. And again, I will take the type and set it to UI bar button. And connect. And then finally, I'll come down and do the last one that's right here, which is pause. And I'll control drag up. And that'll also be an action. And that'll just, we'll just call it pause. And again, UI bar button item. All right. So now all that's left to do, and I know it's not just uh, but it's, all that's left to do is add the code for these. And it's really not a lot of code for any of them. All right, and I want to mention to you before we do, we're going to have at the top of our program, up above here. So up above that label we added, we're going to add two more variables. So right here, so get yourself up right to the top here, right up above. You could put it below this, but I'm going to put it up here. We're going to add two labels. All right, and one of the labels that we're going to use in here, it's going to be an Objective-C label. Ob Objective-C, unlike Swift, Objective-C already has a, ver a, a variable that you could use that's of type NS timer. It's a timer variable. It's designed to do what we want to do. The other variable we're going to do is literally, literally what we're going to do is we're just going to have a variable called count, and its whole job is just going to be to count. Does that make sense? That, that's all, that's its whole job. So. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, and they're both variables, so I'm going to say var timer equals ns timer paren paren and hit enter. Then I'm going to say var count equals zero. Okay, so those are all my variables right there. All right. We're not going to have to put any code in our viewDidLoad method that's already in here. 
We're not going to have to put any low, any code rather, into our did receive memory warning method. So all that stuff that you, you can see only part of it, all this stuff down here, we don't have to put any code there. Now, some books say, well, you're not going to put any code there, so you should remove it. I think that's a bad idea because you never know as time goes on when you might want to put code someplace. So I think you should leave it there. But again, it becomes, after a while at least, kind of, kind of a personal decision. All right? So, well, the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to come in and start worrying about our play button, right? You know, that should make sense. Now, I'm going to put a little code in, and you can if you want to, but the, I'm going to put in two or three lines of code for right now. Just leave them out because we're going to end up moving them around, okay? But I wanted to just show you something. If What if I do this? If I go into play and I say count plus plus and I say print line, count. All right. Oh, sorry. One too many. Come on. Get out of there. There. All right. Everybody see what I just did? You don't have to do that yet. But what, what does that mean? That means that when I click the play button, it should add one to count and it should start printing. All right. So I'm going to do a file save. And again, we're not going to need the print line for our actual code. I just wanted to try to show this to you, that's all. All right, now I'm going to click here. Why is it only one? Because, because you've only called it one time. All right. What we're going to want to do is when you click play, we're going to want to call another function that's called update time. Because we want it to update every second. All right. So why don't we write that function because it's so big. Literally, it involves taking this, these two lines of code that we have right here. All right, and moving them. So I'm going to just put that up here. I got to write my own function, func. We'll just call it uh, update time because that's what we're doing. And I'm going to paste those back in. All right. Now I already told you this. This line that's right here, this line, this print line. We don't really need that in our program. That's not what we want to update. What do we want to update every second? The label. All right. So rather, count plus plus is right, but rather than putting in print line right here, I'm just going to remove that line, and I'm going to put in here, I, I forgot what I called it. I think it was time label. So time label dot text, and I'm going to set that equal to. That. Now, is, is what we're just what we did right there? Does that make sense? The problem that we had previously is that timer that that play button was only being called once. What we want to do is inside of our play is we want to call a function that's going to call this function how often? Every second. Does that make sense? And then it should be changing that number. So we're going to put in one line. It's kind of big, so I stretched it over two lines so you can see it. But our whole play button now is one line of code long. All right? So I'm going to go back to play over here. And I'll tell you what. Let me open up, move this down a little bit. There. All right? So I'm going to say timer equals, like I said, it's a little bit of typing. NS timer dot, and it's called scheduled timer with time interval. All right, so scheduled timer with time interval. 
And I'm going to remove all the junk that they give me here. I don't want any of it. I want to key it in myself. Oops, that wasn't, that wasn't what I wanted to do. So I want all of this stuff that's right here. I want to just remove all that. All right, so I want to be here. You can manually type it in, too, if you're having problems with it. All right? And this is going to require, this is going to require that I put in parameters. All right? Right now, you'll notice it's red because it, it, in order for this to work, it needs parameters, which I haven't given it. So the first parameter is, is how often do I want this to happen? Well, that's every second. That one should make sense. Okay? Where do I want this to happen? Well, I want it to happen basically on the form itself, so what's called my target is self. All right, so those are the first two. Then next, I have to tell it, okay, every second to itself, what do I want to have happen? All right, and what I want to have happen is I want that update time to be called. That update time is what's called a selector. Right, that's just the way, that's just the, the uh, um, verbiage that they use for it. All right? So I put here the word selector with a colon. And then afterwards it says, fine, what do you want to select? So what I want to select, you've got to put it in, and this again isn't my syntax. You put in selector and then the name of the function. We're still not done. There's two more parameters. First one is, do we want to have, is there any inf information we have to send to the user? In other words, what's our user info? There isn't any, so we say nil. And the last thing that's in here is, do we want it to repeat? Well, we do want it to happen every second, so we want to set that to true. Repeat, repeats, repeats. That's it. Now I'll leave it up there for a minute, so if you want to key it in, you can. But we're saying every second to myself, I want you to call update time. There is no additional user information needing, needed, and I want it to loop. I want it to keep repeating. All right? And it's a good time for me to save. Okay. Next, we'll do stop, and it's a total of three lines. Then we'll do pause, and it's a total of one line. So we got four more lines to, to go, and then we're done. All right. And I'll tell you what. I'm going to stop this because that was going. So I want to stop that simulator, and I want to save this. And right now is a good time to check and see, well, I've, I've implemented one-third of what I wanted to do, so let's see, and you can still see the stuff over there. All right, so let's run it, and let's see if I press the play button now if it appears to be working. I'm not going to be able to, man to, to press the pause or the stop button yet because that code's not in there. All right, but there's that. All right, that's good. And I watched some of you, and... I don't know any other way to say this. I don't know if I want to beat your head against the wall or my own head against the wall. Because I watch you and you seem to have the need, not all of you, to type in the whole damn program and then test it. And it doesn't matter if the program is five lines long or five million lines long. You should do a little bit, stop and test what you've got. Do a little bit more, stop and test that, and make sure what you tested to begin with, you didn't break. That's the way to code. All right? It appears to be working. Again, it's just going to keep going. So when it gets to 60, I'm not going to have the minute thing in there, et cetera. And you notice that when I click this, nothing happens. And when I click this, nothing happens. So let's put in that code. All right, we'll put in that code, and that'll be it. So for stop, stop is two lines, three lines. 
The first thing, literally, when you want a timer to stop, <coughs> you have to call a special timer function that's called invalidate. So that's the first thing. Think about what else we're going to want to do. Somebody tell me. So we want to we want to we want to stop the timer. What else do we want to do? Reset it to zero. We want to reset our count to zero, and we want to reset this to zero. That's it. And then for our pause, all we want to do with pause is copy that same timer dot invalidate and put that line in there. That's it. Four more lines of code, and we're done. So in here, I'm in stop timer dot invalidate. And I want to set count equal to zero. And I want to set time, time label dot text equal to zero. And again, because I like doing this, I'm going to save and I'm going to run it again. Now I want to see I don't have the pause working yet, but now my start should work and my stop should work. So start, there it goes. Again, you see pause still doesn't do anything yet, but stop, stops it, resets it to zero. That's good. So two-thirds of my logic appears to work, all I put in so far. So the only thing I've got left is pause, which is just simply the same line that we had here, timer.invalidate. I'm going to save one more time. I'm going to run it one more time. And now all three, the two things on my nav bar and the thing down below on my toolbar, they should all work. So let's start it. There it goes. I'll pause it after five. It's paused. If I start it again, it, it starts up at six. Good. I can pause it again <coughs> at eight. It starts up again at nine. And I can click X, and it stops. As far as I can tell, it's totally functional. All right? Now, that's pretty simple. Not much code. We spent more time on the interface than we did on the code. All right? The only other thing I want to show you really quickly, and I mean really quickly because I'm done, but the only other thing, other thing I want to show you, let me minimize this. I'll, I'll put it back up so if you still need to copy anything, you can. All right? But this other one, where is that one? It's called, it's simple stop. This is the one that you, you also have this one. This was written by some guy named R. Shankar. You know, and, and I, I, he's probably of another ancestry because some of his English isn't real good, but his code is just fine. Here's his. He made he made it. Uh, he made it gray with white writing. And again, there's not absolutely nothing wrong with that, so you can see it right there. But he's just got a regular start button in the bottom left hand corner and a regular stop button in the bottom right hand corner. There's no pause. Alright, so what he has that I don't have is he does hours, minutes, and, and these, this really is not hours, minutes, and seconds. This is minutes, seconds, and hundreds of a second. That's the way that he implemented it. Okay, so really the longest he's expecting this to go would be 59 minutes, 59 seconds, and 99 hundredths of a second. Does that make sense to everybody? But he doesn't have the pause capability built into it. He did it a little bit different way than the way that I did it. All right, in fact, he did some stuff. I'm not sure why he did it that way, but it appears to work just fine. And you'll notice if I run this one, and I click Start, there it goes. So it's much more reminiscent of a real stopwatch than the one that I showed you. All right? And you'll notice 9, 10. If I kept it going, you get the idea, okay? And But I can stop, but there's no pause in it. So when I click Start again, it's going to start back up from zero. All right? Yeah. 
No, it's because you click stop, which told it basically to reset everything. But if I if, if I click start again, yeah. Yeah. So what you have in the folder with today's data on are both the thing that we just created as a class and this one and the associated article that goes along with it. What I'm going to do that we started this week. But what I'm going to do for the next four or five weeks is we're going to do a project like this that takes about an hour or so as a class. Because I think that otherwise it starts to get too heavy to do in one period. All right. And now if you have a problem with it or whatever, you can, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put my code back up there. If that, if that helps you, great. And if you don't need it, that's fine also. Up. There. That's the whole thing. Actually, that's everything, as far as I know. That's the whole program. Now I'll leave that up there for a couple minutes. All right, so the rest of the period is yours. Again, as I mentioned, I have now graded everything in the 164 class, the DIP class, in the 156 class, the Android class. I'm starting to do the grading in here. No, I've not done it yet. When I get done with everybody's, that'll be out there. My hope is it'll be out there by the time you come into class on Thursday. I, this is the best I've ever done, believe it or not, with the first year people. I'm actually grading their stuff almost every day. The other thing is because of the, the grant stuff, uh, Chris is asking me for reports on people all the time. So it's much easier to do it that way. And I'll tell you what, I'll come right back to this, but this is getting really big. So I want to I want to stop the tape and I'll bring this right back up here in just a second. So let me just stop stop recording.